14 Weird Facts About Ancient Egypt The land of the pharaohs is famous for its huge pyramids, its bandaged mummies and its golden treasures. But how much do you really know about ancient Egypt? Was the Great Pyramid built by slaves? How did mummification work? Here, Egyptologist Joyce Tildesley shares 10 lesser known facts. 1. They did not ride camels. The camel was not used regularly in Egypt until the very end of the dynastic age. Instead, the Egyptians used donkeys as beasts of burden, and boats as a highly convenient means of transport. The river Nile flowed through the center of their fertile land, creating a natural highway and sewer. The current helped those who needed to row from south to north, while the wind made life easy for those who wished to sail in the opposite direction. The river was linked to settlements, quarries and building sites by canals. Huge wooden barges were used to transport grain and heavy stone blocks, like papyrus boats ferried people about their daily business. And every day, high above the river, the sun god Ra was believed to sail across the sky in his solar boat. 2. Not everyone was mummified. The mummy, an eviscerated, dried and bandaged corpse, has become a defining Egyptian artifact. Yet mummification was an expensive and time-consuming process, reserved for the more wealthy members of society. The vast majority of Egypt's dead were buried in simple pits in the desert. Why was mummification used in ancient Egypt, and why did they leave the heart in the body? So why did the elite feel the need to mummify their dead? They believed that it was possible to live again after death, but only if the body retained a recognizable human form. Ironically, this could have been achieved quite easily by burying the dead in direct contact with the hot and sterile desert sand, a natural desiccation would then have occurred. But the elite wanted to be buried in coffins within tombs, and this meant that their corpses, no longer in direct contact with the sand, started to rot. The twin requirements of elaborate burial equipment plus a recognizable body led to the science of artificial mummification. 3. The living shared food with the dead. The tomb was designed as an eternal home for the mummified body and the Ka spirit that lived beside it. An accessible tomb chapel allowed families, well-wishers and priests to visit the deceased and leave the regular offerings that the Ka required, while a hidden burial chamber protected the mummy from harm. Within the tomb chapel, food and drink were offered on a regular basis. Having been spiritually consumed by the Ka, they were then physically consumed by the living. During the Feast of the Valley, an annual festival of death and renewal, many families spent the night in the tomb chapels of their ancestors. The hours of darkness were spent drinking and feasting by torchlight as the living celebrated their reunion with the dead. 4. Egyptian women had equal rights with men. In Egypt, men and women of equivalent social status were treated as equals in the eyes of the law. This meant that women could own, earn, buy, sell and inherit property. They could live unprotected by male guardians and, if widowed or divorced, could raise their own children. They could bring cases before, and be punished by, the law courts. And they were expected to deputize for an absent husband in matters of business. Everyone in ancient Egypt was expected to marry, with husbands and wives being allocated complementary but opposite roles within the marriage. The wife, the, mistress of the house, was responsible for all internal, domestic matters. She raised the children and ran the household while her husband, the dominant partner in the marriage, played the external, wage-earning role. 5. Scribes rarely wrote in hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphic writing, a script consisting of many hundreds of intricate images, was beautiful to look at, but time-consuming to create. It was therefore reserved for the most important texts, the writings decorating tomb and temple walls, and texts recording royal achievements. As they went about their daily business, Egypt's scribes routinely used hieratic, a simplified or shorthand form of hieroglyphic writing. Towards the end of the dynastic period they used demotic, an even more simplified version of hieratic. All three scripts were used to write the same ancient Egyptian language. Few of the ancients would have been able to read either hieroglyphs or hieratic, it is estimated that no more than 10%, and perhaps considerably less, of the population was literate. 6. King Tut may have been killed by a hippopotamus. Surprisingly little is known about the life of the boy pharaoh Tutankhamun, but some historians believe they know how he died. Scans of the young king's body show that he was embalmed without his heart or his chest wall. 
This drastic departure from traditional Egyptian burial practice suggests that he may have suffered a horrific injury prior to his death. According to a handful of Egyptologists, one of the most likely causes for this wound would have been a bite from a hippopotamus. Evidence indicates that the Egyptians hunted the beasts for sport, and statues found in King Tut's tomb even depict him in the act of throwing a harpoon. If the boy pharaoh was indeed fond of stalking dangerous game, then his death might have been the result of a hunt gone wrong. 7. The king of Egypt could be a woman. Ideally the king of Egypt would be the son of the previous king. But this was not always possible, and the coronation ceremony had the power to convert the most unlikely candidate into an unassailable king. On at least three occasions women took the throne, ruling in their own right as female kings and using the full king's titulary. The most successful of these female rulers, Hatshepsut, ruled Egypt for more than 20 prosperous years. In the English language, where, king, is gender-specific, we might classify Sobeknifru, Hatshepsut and Tausert as queen's regnant. In Egyptian, however, the phrase that we conventionally translate as, queen, literally means, king's wife, and is entirely inappropriate for these women. 8. Few Egyptian men married their sisters. Some of Egypt's kings married their sisters or half-sisters. These incestuous marriages ensured that the queen was trained in her duties from birth, and that she remained entirely loyal to her husband and their children. They provided appropriate husbands for princesses who might otherwise remain unwed, while restricting the number of potential claimants for the throne. They even provided a link with the gods, several of whom, like Isis and Osiris, enjoyed incestuous unions. However, brother-sister marriages were never compulsory, and some of Egypt's most prominent queens, including Nefertiti, were of non-royal birth. Incestuous marriages were not common outside the royal family until the very end of the dynastic age. The restricted Egyptian kingship terminology, father, mother, brother, sister, son, and daughter, being the only terms used, and the tendency to apply these words loosely so that sister could with equal validity describe an actual sister, a wife or a lover, has led to a lot of confusion over this issue. 9. Not all pharaohs built pyramids. Almost all the pharaohs of the Old Kingdom C2686-2125 BC and Middle Kingdom C2055-1650 BC built pyramid tombs in Egypt's northern deserts. These highly conspicuous monuments link the kings with the sun god Ra while replicating the mound of creation that emerged from the waters of chaos at the beginning of time. But by the start of the New Kingdom, c. 1550 BC, pyramid building was out of fashion. Kings would now build two entirely separate funerary monuments. Their mummies would be buried in hidden rock-cut tombs in the Valley of the Kings on the west bank of the Nile at the southern city of Thebes, while a highly visible memorial temple, situated on the border between the cultivated land home of the living and the sterile desert home of the dead would serve as the focus of the royal mortuary cult. Following the collapse of the new kingdom, subsequent kings were buried in tombs in northern Egypt, some of their burials have never been discovered. 10. The Great Pyramid was not built by slaves. The classical historian Herodotus believed that the Great Pyramid had been built by 100,000 slaves. His image of men, women and children desperately toiling in the harshest of conditions has proved remarkably popular with modern film producers. It is, however, wrong. Archaeological evidence indicates that the Great Pyramid was in fact built by a workforce of 5,000 permanent, salaried employees and up to 20,000 temporary workers. These workers were free men, summoned under the corvée system of national service to put in a three- or four-month shift on the building site before returning home. They were housed in a temporary camp near the pyramid, where they received payment in the form of food, drink, medical attention and, for those who died on duty, burial in the nearby cemetery. 11. Cleopatra was not Egyptian. Along with King Tut, perhaps no figure is more famously associated with ancient Egypt than Cleopatra VII. But while she was born in Alexandria, Cleopatra was actually part of a long line of Greek Macedonians originally descended from Ptolemy I, one of Alexander the Great's most trusted lieutenants. The Ptolemaic dynasty ruled Egypt from 323 to 30 BC, and most of its leaders remained largely Greek in their culture and sensibilities. In fact, Cleopatra was famous for being one of the first members of the Ptolemaic dynasty to actually speak the Egyptian language. 12. 
Ancient Egyptians loved board games. After a long day's work along the Nile River, Egyptians often relaxed by playing board games. Several different games were played, including, Nihen, and, Dogs and Jackals, but perhaps the most popular was a game of chance known as, Senate. This pastime dates back as far as 3500 BC and was played on a long board painted with 30 squares. Each player had a set of pieces that were moved along the board according to rolls of dice or the throwing sticks. Historians still debate Senate's exact rules, but there is little doubt of the game's popularity. Paintings depict Queen Nefertari playing Senate, and pharaohs like Tutankhamun even had game boards buried with them in their tombs. 13. Egyptians kept many animals as pets. The Egyptians saw animals as incarnations of the gods and were one of the first civilizations to keep household pets. Egyptians were particularly fond of cats, which were associated with the goddess Bastet, but they also had a reverence for hawks, ibises, dogs, lions and baboons. Many of these animals held a special place in the Egyptian home, and they were often mummified and buried with their owners after they died. Other creatures were specially trained to work as helper animals. Egyptian police officers, for example, were known to use dogs and even trained monkeys to assist them when out on patrol. 14. Egyptians of both sexes wore makeup. Vanity is as old as civilization, and the ancient Egyptians were no exception. Both men and women were known to wear copious amounts of makeup, which they believed gave them the protection of the gods Horus and Ra. These cosmetics were made by grinding ores like malachite and galena into a substance called coal. It was then liberally applied around the eyes with utensils made out of wood, bone and ivory. Women would also stain their cheeks with red paint and use henna to color their hands and fingernails, and both sexes wore perfumes made from oil, myrrh and cinnamon. The Egyptians believed their makeup had magical healing powers, and they weren't entirely wrong. Research has shown that the lead-based cosmetics worn along the Nile actually helped stave off eye infections. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please like, share and subscribe.